Well, I am glad that you cruised by for my daily devotions, the 28th day of August, 2024. We're going to look at Romans chapter 2, John chapter 14, uh, Psalm 35, and Ezra chapter 3. If you want a good theme for your life, here it is. It is Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. We need to never be ashamed of the good news about Jesus Christ, the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone. First for the Jews, the Jews got it first, okay? Came to the Jews first, then the Gentiles got it. We need to be bold and unashamed about the good news about Jesus Christ. We need to proclaim it, live it, flesh it out, holler about it, get whoop about it, get passionate about it, and never, never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, speak to us uh, through the Bible today. Change our lives with the passages of Scripture that, that we're going to look at. And I pray that you'd crawl inside us with your word and make us different because we heard from you. And I pray that you do, do that with power, wonder, and grace as we encounter you in your word. It, it is my prayer that you'd move. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans chapter 2, the amazing book of Romans. You, therefore, have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are also condemning yourself. Because you who pass judgment do the same things. And we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human human being pass judgment on them and yet do the same things do you think that you will escape god's judgment the answer to that is no it's a rhetorical question or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness forbearance and patience not realizing that god's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance but because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of god's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what he has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good first for the Jew, then for the Gentile, for God does not show favoritism, unlike people okay, who do. <clears throat> all who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law, for it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times also even defending them. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God, if you know his will and approve of what is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind, a light for those who are in, in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of little children because you have in the law the embodiment and knowledge of the truth, you then, who teach others, do you teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say that people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Circumcision has value if you observe the law. But if you break the law, you have become as though you had not been circumcised. So then... If those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirements, will they not be regarded as though they were uncircumcised? 
The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you, who, even though you have the written code and circumcision, are a lawbreaker. A person who is not a Jew, who is only one outwardly, nor is circumcision, a person is not a Jew, who is the only, who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who has who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. Circumcision under the new covenant is a changed heart, fixed up and healed and made holy by the Holy Spirit. That's New Covenant Circumcision. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Wow, that's a great one. You believe in me, believe, you believe in God, believe also in me. My father's, in my father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, this is powerful. This is one of the most important, this, is the, this gets at the big issue in life, okay? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, you don't know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will, they will, and and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask, in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him, will love them and show myself to them. <laughs> Gonna have a drink of coffee. Hope you're having a great morning. Ah, then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, did you know there are two Judases? There were. But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him, to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father has sent in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. 
I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. But he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. And then Psalm 35. That's what I wrote. Psalm 35. Contend, Lord, with those who contend with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up shield and armor. Arise and come to my aid. Brandish spear and javelin against those who pursue me. Say to me, I am your salvation. May those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame. May those who plot my ruin be turned back in dismay. May they be like chaff before the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them away. May their path be dark and slippery and the angel of the Lord with, with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Since they hid their net uh, for me without cause and without cause dug a pit for me, may ruin overtake them by surprise. May the net they hid entangle them. May they fall into the pit to their ruin. Then my soul will rejoice in the Lord and delight in his salvation. My whole being will exclaim, Who is like you, Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them the poor and needy from those who robbed them. Ruthless witnesses come forward. They question me on things I know nothing about. You, they repay me evil for good and leave me like one bereaved. Yet when they were ill, I put on sackcloth and humbled myself with fasting. When my prayers returned to me unanswered, I went about mourning as though my, for my friend or brother. I bowed my head in grief as though weeping for my mother. But when I stumbled, they gathered in glee, assailants gathered against me without my knowledge. They slandered me without ceasing. Like the ungodly, they maliciously mocked. They gnashed their teeth at me. How long, O Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their ravages, my precious life from those lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. Among the, th the throngs, I will praise you. Do not let those gloat over me who are my enemies without cause. Do not let those who hate me without reason maliciously wink the eye. Do not speak peaceably, but devise false accusations against those who live quietly in the land. They sneer at me and say, aha, aha, with our own eyes, we have seen it. Lord, you have seen this. Do not be silent. Do not be far from me, Lord. Awake and rise to my defense. Contend for me, my God and Lord. Vindicate me in your righteousness, Lord, my God. Do not let them gloat over me. Do not let them think, aha, just what he wanted, just what we wanted, or say, we have swallowed him up. May all who gloat over my distress be put to shame and confusion. May all who exalt themselves over me be clothed with shame and disgrace. May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say the Lord be exalted who delights in the well-being of his servant. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praises all day long. Ezra chapter 3. Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Right after Second Chronicles. Ezra chapter 3. Yesterday, we had a bunch of those wild names and stuff. Okay, Ezra chapter 3. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled together as one in Jerusalem. Then Joshua, son of Josadak, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and his associates began to build the altar of God, of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Wouldn't you love for people to call you the man of God? That's what they call Moses. Wow. What, a, what an incredible um, testament to the godliness of the dude. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundations and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both morning and evening sacrifices. Then, in accordance with what is written, they celebrated the festival of tabernacles with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. After that, they presented the regular burnt offerings, the new moon sacrifice and sacrifices 
for all the appointed sacred festivals of the Lord, as well as those brought as free will offerings to the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord through the foundations of the Lord's temple, though the foundations of the Lord's temple had not been not been laid. Then they gave money to the masons and carpenters and gave food and drink and olive oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre so that they would bring cedar logs by sea from Lebanon to Joppa as authorized by Cyrus, king of Persia. On the second month of the second year after their, their arrival at the house of God in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Josadak, and the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, and all who had returned from their cap from the captivity to Jerusalem, began their began the work. They appointed Levites twenty years old and older to supervise the building of the house of the Lord. Joshua and his sons and brothers, and Cadmiel and his sons, descendants of Hedoviah, and the sons of Henadad and their sons and daughters, all Levites, joined together in supervising those working on the house of, of God. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and their trumpets and their Levites and the sons of Asaph with cymbals took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by, the, by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, He is good. His love toward Israel endures forever. And all the people have a, have a great shout. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had been, who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of the temple being laid while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping because the people made so much noise and the sound was heard far away. Well, the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. Change our lives by what we heard. Make your word real in our lives as you write a new law in our hearts. Change us with the power of the Holy Spirit according to the truth of your word. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.